Hey, what's going on everybody? Today we're going to take a look at some HR data relating to employee attrition. Here are our six objectives, but first let's jump in and talk about the data set. Of course, employee attrition means did they leave the company or are they still with us? Here is the field, column B, that indicates attrition, yes or no. Yes, they're st still around, no, they are not. Each record in this data set represents an employee and each column is different at, shows different attributes about the employee. We have things such as their job role, job satisfaction, marital status, hourly rate, education field, and so on and so, so forth, quite a bit of attributes. So let's take a look at these objectives and jump right in. Number one, show the average age for employees with attrition and without. I'm, I'm gonna be going kind of fast, so, so try to stick with me. Let's of course go to the control A to select our entire data set, insert pivot table on a new tab. And I'm gonna go ahead and copy over the objective so we can follow along here. Let's blow this up a bit. Average age of employees for, with attrition and without. So let's pull in attrition, yes, no, and age. Where is age? Right here. And Excel defaulted to a sum, so I'm going to change that to an average. Let's clean these up. So average age of employees that are still stuck around, 37. For those with attrition, those who left, 33 years old. All right, nice and easy. So number two, let's copy this over. Show an age histogram for employees with attrition and without using bucket sizes of five years. So I'm going to copy this pivot table above just so I have a format. Let's pull attrition up to the columns uh, window. Let's pull. We want age show an age histogram yep so age so i'm pulling age in my rows field down here this is showing every possible value for age within my data set and then i'm going to count that in the values field so let's do a count and there let me just format those nicely number format with no decimals and just to ensure that we've captured all the employees, see how we have a total grand total here of 1470? If I go to my data set and roll to the bottom, you see it stops at 1471 because we have one row as a header. So there are 1470 records in this data set. So this is all the employees. All right, age histogram using bucket sizes of five years. So let's right click anywhere in this column and let's click group. Here is our grouping context menu showing the starting range for age, the ending range for age, and what do we want to bucket those by? Let's do five years, okay? See here we have five-year buckets and which employees belong in each bucket. I'm going to get rid of this grand total for now. If you've watched any of my videos, you know I'm a fan of making histograms like this. Let's highlight our target data here, conditional formatting, data bars. I'm going to gradient fill. Then let's make the columns the same width. And we can see the age distributions for employees without attrition. You can see it's focused right here on this 33 to 37 is the deepest part of that employee pool. Versus those with attrition, you can see the deepest part of that pool is uh, one age bracket lower. All right, number three, objective three. Show the rate of attrition by department. Hint uses stacked bar chart, one for each department, where each bar totals 100%. So I'm going to just steal this table up above to just use the basic structure. Attrition on top. We're pulling age out. Department and account of attrition. We have our 1470, which lets me know we captured all the employees. Let's format that to get rid of those decimal places. Here are our three departments in the data set. I can verify that by going back to the data, 
going to the top, putting a filter on, and looking at department, sure enough, we have only three departments. Okay, that's cool. So insert here, it's this third bar chart is the one I'm looking for. 100% stacked column. Let's click OK. So each bar is a department. The orange portion of the bar is the percent of employees that left. Blue is the percent of employees still with us. So we can see R&D folks had the lowest percent of employees that left. Sales, human resources, both had higher shares of employees who left. Okay, let's go on to number four. Show the same as above, but for education field. Assuming education is spelled correctly. So let's pull out department and let's pull in education field. So which field was the employee educated in? Let's pull in our same stacked bar chart. And each bar is an education field. The yellow is the percent of employees still with us from that field. So just a quick look at this. If you study human resources or if you, excuse me, the orange portion of the bar is the employees that left, that is a yes indicator on attrition. I had that backwards, pardon me. If you studied human resources, high chance you left. If you studied just a general technical degree, high chance you left. Um, on the other end of it, if you studied medical or life sciences, there's a high chance you stuck around. All right, number five. How does commute time relate to attrition? Show the distribution of commute times for attrition and non-attrition employees with a bucket size of three minutes. All right, the basic idea here, guys, that we want to check out is for employees who have longer commute times, do, do they tend to leave the company at higher rates than those employees with short commute times? Um, you know, in a perfect world, we don't want to commute far to work. So let's grab this pivot table. Let's paste it down here. Let's clear it out entirely. And we want attrition, yes, no. That's going to be up here. Let's get rid of this grand total just right off the bat. And we want to pull in commute time, or in this case, it's called distance from home into the rows field. And here I'm seeing all possible values of distance from home. Let's count. Let's pull a count. And we see we have our 1,470 employees. Let's format that to get rid of the decimals. Number format, number. And they want bucket sizes of three minutes for commute time. So I'm just right clicking anywhere in this commute time right here. Right click group by three. And we can see now we have buckets of three, three minute commute times or three miles, whatever that unit is. Let's throw on a histogram. So conditional formatting, data bars, gradient. Let's blow these up a little bit. And naturally, because we have so many more employees with no attrition, as compared to employees with attrition, these bars are gonna be more filled out. What I'm looking at more importantly is the distribution of the bars within the, the commute time buckets. For example, I want to look at, do we have different cluster patterns on the higher commute time? So let's open this up even more. All right, check this out. So for the employees with no attrition, those are that are still with us, commute time just steadily tails off. However, though, for those employees who have left us, look at this bar right here. Commute time tails off and tails off, and then all of a sudden we have this cluster, a chunk of employees with 22 to 24 minute commute times. That kind of same distribution or, or or chunk of employees is not present in those that are still with us. So that's interesting. We had a you know subset of people that had to co commute quite quite far, and 
maybe that's something to look into if that um, influences attrition. All right, last but not least, let's copy over objective six. Does marital status affect attrition? Show attrition rates by marital status, okay? Let's just copy this pivot table down here. Let's clear everything. Where's our marital status there? Account of attrition. I'm going to format that to get rid of decimals again. Okay, so let's pull on our histogram so we can just kind of explore the data at a glance. That's not helping too much, so let's pull in our stacked up chart. All right, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, if you were single, you had the highest chance of leaving the company represented by this orange portion of the bar. If you were married, you had the next highest chance, percent chance. Nowhere near if you're single, though. If you're divorced, you had the lowest chance of leave, leaving the company. And I'm just going to generalize here, and I could be totally wrong about this, but if you're married, you kind of have different sets of financial responsibilities. You may be less likely to leave a job. If you're divorced, you definitely have different sets of financial responsibilities. Um, could be child support, alimony, who knows, but you these data show you're less likely to leave your job. However, if you're single, as shown by this bar, uh, you're out of there. You don't, you don't really need to stick around. So let's look at part two of this question. Now, layer in overtime to see how attrition varies with respect to marital status and overtime. So we have an overtime field. Let me find it. Here and let's put that on top of marital status. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of these data bars for now. So go to clear formatting. Okay, and I'm just gonna do a percent share of total. So let's, I need to add a total back in here. So design grand totals on for rows and columns. And I'm gonna do just each category's percent of the total, of its res respective total. And that should tally out to 100%. And this is just a quick, quick and dirty way to check out these numbers. So for those who worked overtime, we had 30% rates of attrition. For those who did not work overtime, we only had 10% rates of attrition. For those who worked overtime and were single, let's check this out. If you did not work overtime and you were single, the chances you only 16% of those employees left. This right here. However, if you're single and you did, you were made to work overtime. Half those employees left. So if you're single, you know, I guess your, your time is of the essence to you. You're, you're saying, hey, uh, no overtime for me. I'm going to leave here and find another job that, that doesn't show, give me overtime. Now let's look at the divorced people here. Divorced. If you're divorced and you had no overtime, only 6% of those people left. If you were divorced and you were made to work overtime, yes, 19% of those people left. So overtime does not seem to sit well with, with people regardless of your marital status. Um, all right. Anyway, guys, this ends the HR data example. I hope you got value out of this. If you have any questions, let me know and stay tuned. I have more videos coming. Any questions, reach out. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.